Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Can you see that in Jesus' name quickly? Because the service will end by 11 a.m. in the morning. That is our timing. The topic this morning says, Breaking the yoke of delay. Say it with me. Breaking the yoke of delay. If you believe it, that that yoke shall be broken, say after me, Breaking the yoke of delay. Shout hallelujah. John chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. Quickly. John chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. A man was there lying who had seen who had been ill for 38 years. Jesus saw him there. He knew that the man had been ill for such a long time. So he asked him, Do you want to get well? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one here to put me in the pool. In the pool, shout hallelujah. I have a good news for somebody in this house. Maybe you are here, you don't have anybody to help you. There is nobody to assist you financially. There is, no, so, there is nobody to give you that work. I've come here to pray that you go by your life. I say I've come here that after this service, God will send a helper to your life. I'm not here. I say, God will send the helper to your life. Amen. I'm not here. So I say, God will send the helper to your life. Amen. Now, the story of this man was very pathetic. The story of this gentleman was very, very pathetic, as it were. 38 years in a spot. 38 years in a place. In that spot, all his brothers left him, his friends left him. That's the story. Just go with me in this journey. 38 years in a spot, there was no healing that was coming. He went to the pool like others. He went to the pool like others to receive his own healing. Now, let's start the story from chapter 1, verse 1. We are going to see. There were so many sick people, men and women, from verse 1. And the Lord had it. Before you can get it, okay, after these things, there was a feast of the Jews and Jews. And Jesus went up to the Jerusalem, verse 2. Quickly, please. And, and now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. Verse 3, quickly. In this lay a multitude of them that we are sick, blind, hot, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4. For an angel of the Lord went down at the certain seasons in the, into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole with whatsoever disease he was in. He was holding. And a certain man was there who had been 30 and 8 years in his infirmity. When Jesus saw him lying and he knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Wouldest thou be made whole? Verse 7. The sick man was asked, answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but why I'm coming and that step it down before me. The truth is that once you are suffering, when you have a problem of delay, you are bound to complain. Every time you are complaining, every time you are saying how things are not working, when a man or a woman suffers from a spirit of delay, delay is a spirit. What did I say? Delay is a what? It's a spirit. Don't take it ordinary. Now, when a man suffers from delay, the woman suffers from delay, one of, one of their characteristics is that they will complain a lot. Now, watch this very carefully. When Jesus came to help him, Jesus said, 
do you want to be to be healed? Instead of answering yes, sir, he now began to tell you how he had no body. Like many of us, you're hearing me, you're watching me online. All this while you complain to whoever that gets to hear, I don't have any body. I don't have anybody to help me. I don't have anybody to put me in that job. My father is not the commissioner. My brother is not the palm sec. But I've come here with the good news for you. Because you are in this service, you are watching me online. I break that to you, God, deliver your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So this man began to complain. I say, I have no other, I, I don't have anybody. Instead of answering Jesus, yes, please, can you hear me? He began to complain. You look at that scripture. He said, Jesus, I, I don't have anybody. Now, Jesus asked him a question first. He said, would, would you like to be healed? Instead of saying, yes, I want to be healed, he began to complain. Now, the law had it that before you can be healed, you need to enter the pool first. When the water is troubled by the angels, if you don't enter first, that is the man's law. That is the law. They, that is the law. If you don't enter the pool first, no healing for you. So for that eight years, he was in a place, and Jesus knew he was. He has been in that spot. Now let me give you good news to you. Jesus knew. God, Jesus knows that you have been in that problem for a long time. Are you? Are you? Are you Jesus knows very clearly that you have been in that problem for a long time. Yes, you are people. Yes, you you, you know you, you you feel that nobody knows. Nobody knows. God does not. I'm telling you this morning. Jesus, Bible says Jesus knew that he has been lying there for 38 years. And went straight to him. I prophesied to somebody. In the midst of lack all around you, God shall locate you. No, I said God shall locate you. Yeah, I prophesied to somebody in your house, I prophesied to you that God shall locate you. Yeah, the Bible said that there were multitude of people that were sick with all kinds of disease. And Jesus came to him straight. I said, today your story has changed. I said to somebody, today by the spirit of this service, your story has changed in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, all became history. All became history. When Jesus began to deal with him, he had an encounter. Jesus told him, okay, you want to be here? He said, fine. He said, today, you shall not enter the pool again. I said to somebody, you don't need anybody to prosper. You don't need anybody. On that very day, Jesus brought the protocol. The protocol was, before you can be healed, you must enter the pool. I'm saying to somebody, now you all, you all this while you believe that before you can prosper, you must know somebody. That has been your belief. But I have a good news for you. You know what Jesus does and what Jesus did at that time? When Jesus came around, he said, brother, the pool has become irrelevant. What am I saying? He told him. He didn't tell him. He said, by his action, Jesus made him to realize that the pool, you don't need to enter the pool again. You don't need to enter first. In fact, you don't even need your brothers to carry you first. Because that was his complaint. That nobody carries me when the water is troubled. I have a good news for some, especially for five of you. You don't have anybody helping you. You have a problem to connect to what is going around you. You don't have anything as it were. But I've come here to announce to you, if Jesus is whom you believe, that protocol of trying to connect people, trying to call people, Jesus has broken that yoke over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say Jesus has broken that protocol over your life in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is to have an encounter. Say, I shall have an encounter. Say, I will have an encounter. I don't know how long you've been in that problem. I don't know how long. I don't know how many years. This guy was there for 38 years. His friends left him. You know, it's not normal. When somebody is not doing well, everybody will leave you. Is that not true? It's true. It's true. That is the reality of life. So if you complain, don't blame them. You are not doing well. You have a problem. And so they will definitely leave you. Yes, you can complain. But the truth remains that People in JB you have a problem, you are sick, they have been carrying you. But I've come here to announce to you that you don't need any of them anymore. 
that sickness will disappear from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. After that eight years, Jesus came and told him, okay, pick that mat and go. Pick your mat and go. The man was like, what is going on? The man, pick this mat. This was a man that believed the place for that eight years. See, you need to understand that Jesus is same yesterday, today and what? Forever. He wrote that in verse 8. He, he, has, he can never change, he has never changed. See, let me tell you this thing very clearly. I don't care how you don't, things are not working. I don't care how you've been in that financial difficulty for long. But I've come here with the good news that Jesus is still breaking protocols. Jesus is still doing wonders. That we were created for signs and wonders. That man on that day became the signature for all eyes. That very day, that man became the center of attraction. I want to prophesy to somebody, I see three of you, in, in less than two weeks, your life become the center of attraction. I say, I prophesy to three of you, I say, if your amen is louder, and that is the key, I say, after this time, after this day, your life shall become the center of attraction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Devil is a pastor. That it is. The hand of the enemy over his life was broken. The hand of the enemy upon his life was broken. I want to announce to somebody at this morning in this glorious service that the hand, I see the hand of the enemy over your life being with that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hand over your marriage, hand over your, your health, hand over your finance. That hand has been with that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Devil is a pastor. That eight years, even when he came out from that problem, people that have known him for being in that spot for years began to tell him, Who did this thing to you? This is a Sabbath day. How can you be carrying mad about? This is how wicked men can be. This is how wicked men can be. You know the good news? That person that says you shall not prosper, that person that says it shall not be well with you. They will see you in a different way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I said they will see you in a different way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Because quickly I'll be praying for some people here this morning. Quickly. You are here this morning, you've been complaining a lot. Proverbs 13 12 says, Hope deferred, make, it, make any heart sick. I repeat, Hope deferred, make it the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. I prophesy to somebody here, your desire shall be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What defend make the heart sick? But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Your desire shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now delay could be orchestrated by devil. Delay. The hand of the enemy, for this man, it was the hand of the enemy. There are not people that they are on delay is because God wants to give it to you at an appointed time. Somebody hearing me? I've not come here to speak to those class of people. I've come here to speak to the class of people that your own delay, that the enemy has been responsible. There are also delays that are self-inflicted. What do I mean? There could be a lot of reasons why that delay is still going on in your life. Number one, sin. Sin. Sin will cause delay in your life. Praise the Lord. Sin, you see sin, it will cause delay. Secondly, wrong confessions. You confess negatively. You are the type that will never accept that God is doing something. You want to see Naira in your account. In fact, you want to see dollar. You want to see Naira and dollar in your account before you can accept that God is doing something. That could cause delay in your life. Somebody, somebody had a wrong confession. You're always talking negative. 
you are always saying how things are not been working. How you have opened that business, it still collapse. How you have opened the other one, it still is about to collapse. Even when it has not collapsed, you are you are you are weak to tell somebody that that business is about to collapse, and it has not collapsed. So that can cause delay. Wrong association can bring delay in your life. There are people you move out with, it will cause delay in your life. When you are saying a different thing than doing at that, at that thing, within that community or within that space, you have you are found yourself. These are the people you can't get the information from. Because all they are thinking is something that is very relevant. You, there are kind of people you move with, you can't make progress in life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, there are people you move with, very important. To share for our youth, even adults as it were. There are people you move with in life, your life will be stagnated. These are, self, these are reasons that one will experience self-inflicted delay. There are languages you use that can cause delay upon your life. Yes, sir. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Cause! That's why I'm going to pray for some people. Cause! Causes! Can cause delay in your life. And delay is not a very good thing to experience. We know that's our money, you are not money. We know that's our buying car, you are not buying car. This man was in a spot for 38 years. What a body. 38 years, somebody was, what? People, he, he, he will be there, people will come and go home. People will come, they will be singing, hallelujah, they are celebrating God. He, he was there for 38 years, he was in a spot. And of course you know, that if somebody is sick and you are lying on a bed, whether in the hospital, they are going to have what is called bed sores, bed what? Bed sores, onya, ejuga. They use your brain, calculate 38 years. Man created by God is, was in a spot, Jesus saw him. Why did Jesus pick, pick out on him? Because having delay god is not happy about it of all the people that we are there jesus came to him straight he knew so i want to tell somebody good news this month this month that that delay in your life after this service it shall be over in jesus name Amen. i'm not here i say it shall be over in jesus name Amen. positioning can also wrong positioning being at the right place at the right time can also Bring, deliver you from delay. Positioning, wrong positioning. You are not, you're always at the wrong place. When they are employing, when they are employing, you are either in one village. When they are doing something tangible, it is when you have passed. One day a man told me that God job in our service. He said, he never knew every, anybody in prison service. So one day he was passing through our office at Nebeka. Nobody told him about the employment. He never knew. He just came from his village looking for a job, a graduate. He said one day, one painful day, he was just passing along, just through, through, through our street, our office. And he saw people gathered. He went closer. He asked them what is going on. He saw an advert that they are employing people. That was how this guy quickly rushed somewhere, got whatever he needed. He wrote an application and this and that and submitted the application. Do you know, lo and behold, he was employed. He was what? Delay was broken. He was in the right position. Amen. See, the worst thing that can happen to you, another one will say, the righteous, the steps of righteous are don't, are don't want, are ordered by the Lord. And I pray for somebody here this morning. May your steps be ordered by the Lord. Amen. You don't understand? I say, I pray for somebody here in this house. May your steps be ordered by the Lord. Amen. That was how he never knew anybody from Adam. He went back home and told the wife, I got the job. Why is it what, what I tell you? You got what? Federal service. Federal civil service. He said, I got the job. That was how he never knew anybody. Maybe for that time, he said he was a bit serious. He was serious with God. He was serious with God. They were going for fellowship. I mean, and they are then they were then one church like that. They were going for fellowship. That was how this guy got that job. He told me himself. He told me that was how he entered our service. 
have a mandate this morning to break the yoke of the Lord by your life. Amen. You don't understand. I say, I'll come here with a mandate, simple mandate, simple journey. To break that yoke of the Lord by your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I say, I'll come here with a mandate to break that yoke. You are watching me online. I break that yoke of the Lord over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Devil is a bastard. They got a job. Delay was broken. Delay. Life story. True story. He told me. But so I was asking, how did you manage to get? You know in Nigeria, for you to get a job, you must know somebody that knows somebody. Is it not true? I was very curious. I asked him, how did you get a job here? He told me how. Because we were sharing notes. I told him how I got my own job. He was actually, he said, Pastor, very sincere. I didn't know anybody in this service. Right positioning. This is a prayer must not fail to pray. Say, Lord, every day, Lord, order my steps. Say, Lord, order my steps. I say, Lord, order my steps. This is a prayer point must not fail to pray. If God orders your steps, your steps will be ordered into favor. So what do you mean? Your steps will be ordered into what? Into prosperity. One thing you must never know. Don't just walk about. Your legs are everywhere. God does not want your legs to be everywhere. God wants to order your steps. Say, Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my steps. I'm not hearing. I say, Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my steps. That is a prayer point. Learn how to pray this every day. Say, Lord, order my steps. Say, the steps are the righteous. And what that means, if you have an issue with God, you settle it with God. If you have a problem with God, if you have a problem with the way you live, God says, the steps of the righteous are ordered by Lord. Your steps will be ordered into favor. Ordered into open doors. Amen. God will not be moving you. It, it, I mean, it, it looks like miracles. Sometimes people say, no, I'm not coming. I will see you tomorrow. And without knowing that God is about to order you into favor. That God is about to order you There are some things that happen in my life. I said, Lord, indeed, you will be ordering my steps. How did I manage to be at this place at this time? Somebody help me. Sometimes I wonder how. And I realize that I remember the scripture. And many times I pray this prayer. Sometimes I forget. But the truth is, he said, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I prophesied to somebody here. I said, I prophesied to somebody here. As I prophesy, just begin to hit your leg on the ground. I say, I prophesy it up to somebody here. I say, your steps shall be ordered by the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This less will not take you to a place of slaughter. So I, I say, this less shall not take me. My steps shall not take me to a place of slaughter. My staff shall not take me to a vehicle that I will die untimely. When God orders your steps, you don't enter car anyhow. As you are ordering your step, you get to one KK and something will be is about to happen. Will happen. They won't do. Because God is here ordering yourself. Because you pray that prayer. Because you believe. He will order yourself out from that KK. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. These things are da 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 da. That, that, that life, that real. God cannot be ordering yourself. He will order yourself into a car that will kidnap. It's not possible. Say that number is not possible. Kai. There are basic truths you must know about God. One of the, one of the, one of the truths you must know is that God will order your steps into a people. What are we talking about? We are talking about we are talking about things that can make you to suffer delay. Wrong positioning. And that's why we pray that prayer. Lord, order my steps every day. As you are waking up from your house, as you are going out, I want you to you need to declare and say, Lord, order my steps today. I see what we have. This is not magic. This is God's word. And you order your steps in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You order your steps in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you wonder sometimes you have you just left your house and you now see somebody that will connect you? Hey, hey, I've been looking for you. This is not true. Where have you been? And remember, you've been living, you are living with that guy in the same community, in the same town. 
For two years I have not seen you. And this is the guy that will help you to become somebody. Suddenly, when you are praying this kind of prayer, Lord, order my steps. That day you come out from your house, the first person you are going to see is that guy. He ah, where are you there? He said, I knew. What do you have? I've been looking for you. There's something I wanted to show you. There's something I want to introduce you to. And that's how you make it in life. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God does not honor your servant, you become a vacuum. What makes a backup on a backup on? Because God has not honored his or her steps. You are walking about everywhere. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. For the last time I say, Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my steps. And nothing that can cause delay is double-mindedness. You are not sure that God will, you are going to make it. I've come here to break that you over your life. You are not sure. You can't leave the service with this one. Believe that you are going to make it in life. That is what carries me. That's what carries me. I believe so much I'm going to make it. Even if I'm inside a cage, I'm still shouting I will make it. That's what will sustain you in this life. But if you are double-minded about you making it in life, you are always not sure. Even when the world is coming, you are still doubting, you are still thinking, how can it be? Because you have looked around. Bank account is not showing it. People you know is not showing it. The house you live is not showing it. The car you have is not showing it. You cannot make it. Don't be double-minded about God seeing you through. Tell your neighbor, don't be double-minded. Tell your neighbor clearly, loud and clear, don't be double-minded. What God is about to do in your life. That's all I want to drop with you as I close the service. Don't be double-minded. If you are not double-minded, delay will run away. Like I said, it's a spirit. Delay is a spirit. Delay is a spirit. Something is not coming forth, it's a spirit. Others are getting you are not getting it's a spirit. What did I, what did I say? It's a spirit. And once you are double-minded, once you are double-minded, you are not so sure that you walk, it will never walk. Jesus, say Jesus help me. Because that guy almost missed the blessing. This guy we read about him. We read about him. Almost he was double-minded. But Jesus helped him. Is it true? Jesus helped him clearly. He said, No. Carry him out and go. The man began to complain. Like I was speaking, you're complaining within yourself. How can it work? How will it work? You are double minded. But on that day, Jesus helped him. I prophesy to you, Jesus will help you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I said to somebody here, Jesus will help you. Amen. On that day, Jesus helped him. Today, Jesus will help you. Can we stand up? Isaiah 60 verse 1. Give me Isaiah 60 verse 1. We're going to recite it and we pray. Isaiah 60 verse 1. He said, Arise and shine. If you are going to arise with your heart, you are going to shine. Delay will be over. Isaiah, Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Tell your neighbor your light has come. Tell your friend your light has come. Let Thomas hear that your light has come. Light. Say, Arise. Say, ar say, I arise. I, arise. I, shine I shine forth. For my light has come. Light. That the glory of Jehovah, the glory of Jehovah is risen upon me. I'm going to pray. Quickly, that is the prayer I'm going to pray. Say, Lord, I arise. I will shine forth. I will shine out of this delay. Make it a prayer point. Begin to pray. Pray that prayer very well. Say, Lord, every power holding me down. Every power that has kept me in a spot for these years. I shine forth. I break through. I break forth. See, I want you to pray with your heart. The power is here to deliver already. The power is here to deliver. Malaka pali da sakato la bade. Zankata la bo shetene. I will arise. 
I will arise and shine forth out of delay in my life. Delay my marriage. Delay my marriage.